everybody. Welcome to Art Lab at Home. My name is Katie. Uh, I am the Children's Librarian at the Clarkston Library. And right now we are going to take some time to do some of the fun arts and crafts and science experiments that we would normally be doing in the library, um, in the comfort of your home, and in my home, my sewing room, as you can see here. Uh, today we are going to talk about symmetry, which is something that you're going to learn about in math class if you haven't already. Um, it's a lot of fun. We're going to do two symmetrical activities um, and let's get started. So there's a bunch of different types of symmetry. Today we're going to talk about horizontal and vertical symmetry. Now I think that vertical symmetry is the easiest to explain. So symmetrical means or symmetry means that something is the same like all the way around. So when we talk about vertical symmetry if you take something like my face for example and you draw a line from the top right down the middle all the way to the bottom it would be the same on both sides so if i have a line right down my face you can see i have an eye on both sides i have half of my nose i've got some mouth i've got eyebrows and ears my hair is half up and half down on both sides the only thing that's not vertically symmetrical about my face is I have a little mole right here on one side, but not on the other. So that's what vertical symmetry means. It means if you take a line from the top to the bottom, whatever your image is, is the same on both sides. Now, horizontal symmetry is similar. Uh, you're still drawing a line across your image, but this time you're going to draw a line from left to right. Although when you look at it on the video screen, that's right to left, isn't it? I've got my video unmirrored. Okay, so if we draw that line across my face, does my face have horizontal symmetry? No, because I have eyes up here, but no eyes down here. I have a mouth down here, but no mouth up here. So faces have vertical symmetry, but not horizontal symmetry. And today we're gonna do two activities that uh, help us make things symmetrical or see symmetry as a form of art. So for the first one, we're using our names. This is gonna help you practice your writing. It's gonna be a lot of fun, like making some art. So for this project, you are gonna need a piece of paper, a pencil, some markers, and something flat that you can like rub really hard with. You could use the edge of your scissors, or like the edge of a glue stick. You could use a popsicle stick if you have one. You just need something, we call this burnishing, when you rub really hard on a hard surface. And you'll see why we need that in a second. So let's look down at our paper. The very first thing that we're gonna do is take our paper and we're gonna fold it in half vertically, right? So if you do a line from the top to the bottom, we're gonna fold it in half that way. Sometimes people will call that hot dog style because it looks like a hot dog. Okay, so now you've got your piece of paper folded in half vertically. You're gonna take your, but we're gonna orient it so that it's horizontal. So you've got one line running all the way across your paper. You're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna write your name across the piece of paper. This is a great chance to practice your cursive. I think that this activity looks better if you do it in cursive. If you can't write in cursive, it's a great chance to practice. If you haven't learned how to write in cursive, you can do it uh, writing in block letters, but I want you to make sure that if you do that, all of the letters of your name touch. So I've got the K and the A touch here, the A and the D and the D and the Y, okay? But we're gonna, we're gonna stick with cursive if we can. If you need some help with, from an adult writing cursive, that's great too. Um, but this is, this is all about practicing. So you want to write your name and you want the bottom of your name, like the line that you would normally write on, to be that line right down the middle. So I'm going to do a big K and then an A and a D and a Y. You can kind of see that, right? How do I, there we go. Katie, that's my name. So now you're gonna fold your piece of paper in half with your name on the inside. Actually, before we do that, we're gonna trace over the letters the, um, of our name 
so that it gets really, really dark. You want like a lot of graphite, a lot of that pencil on the paper. So just trace over and make your name really dark. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna fold it in half with your name on the inside and you're gonna take your burnishing tool or your hard surface and you're gonna press down kind of hard and you're gonna rub it back and forth across this paper. And you wanna get all the way across your paper. You should kind of be able to see the outline of your name um, even with the paper closed since it's so dark. And you wanna make sure that you're burnishing, you're rubbing really hard right on top of where your name is. So let's see what we can do. I don't know if you noticed, but my name has a letter that goes underneath the line. Like it has my Y, the, the tail of my Y goes underneath the line. That's fine if you've got a Y or a J or a G, any of those letters, a P, a Q, that go underneath that line, um, it'll all turn out pretty cool. You just want the majority of the bottom to be on that line. Okay, so once you've burnished, once you've rubbed really hard, you're gonna open up your piece of paper and you can kind of see how some of the graphite from your name has transferred to the top of the paper. Here, let's read my name. So you can see how you've got like the loops from the Y, you can see that big, big Y loop up top where it burnished. What I want you to do now is go ahead and outline your name and outline the reflection or the, the transfer of that graphite. I want you to highlight, draw that all in a dark marker, okay? Now, as you can see, my name has horizontal symmetry because it's the same up top as it is on the bottom. I've got a K, a K, an A, an A, a D, a D, a Y, a Y. So if you draw that line straight through, it'll look the same. Now, once you've got this, I want you to take a look at it. You can keep it like this. You can turn it on its head. Now it's got vertical symmetry, right? Because now the line is top to bottom. You can turn it backwards. You can turn it whichever which way you want. And I want you to look at your name and see if you see any shapes. You know, like sometimes when you go outside and you look at the clouds and you're like, oh, that cloud looks like a dog. See if you can find any cool shapes in your name. For me, I think that these, the loops of my Y's up here kind of look like eyeballs. And then these, the like long parts of my D kind of look like hands sticking out. <laughs> Hand. So what you're gonna do now is take your markers and you're gonna color in your name to create a bug or a weird flower or an alien or a monster, whatever you wanna call it, it's your name, buddy. So I've got my two eyes with like my pupils. I've got my little hands and my fingers. I've got like a very like tight dress on. You can see my hips going. You got my shoes. Um, and this is my symmetrical name bug. And that is the end of our first activity. Now, for our second activity, you are gonna need some strips of paper. You're gonna need a stapler. I couldn't find a stapler today. So I use some glue. Um, so glue will work, double stick tape will work. A stapler is best, but in a pinch, we're good at improvising, right? Um, and scissors are nice to have for this too, but not necessary. This is a really, really easy project. Really all you need are strips of colorful paper and a stapler if you have one, or glue or double stick tape if you don't. Now, uh, my strips are pretty thin. They're about half an inch wide. I would suggest doing this with strips that are an inch to two inches wide. I'm using some scraps from an old project, so this is what I've got today. But again, if you are making your own strips of paper, I would go just a little bit wider. It's a little easier to work with. Now, uh, we have nine strips of paper today. And the important thing is, is that eight of those strips of paper, you wanna be in pairs. So I've got two of the same green. I've got two of the same purple, two of the same blue. Ooh, I'm missing one of my pinks. Uh, 
two of the same pink, so that's eight. And then your last one is just gonna be its own color. I'm using orange today. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up your strips of paper, see this. The one that is like the only one that that's the color, it goes right in the middle. And then you are gonna line up the same color on the outside of that middle strip. And so you want it to kind of look like a sandwich, right? You've got the same colors radiating out from the center. So like in this case, our pinks are our slices of bread, and then the purple is the mustard that we put on both slices, and the blue is, I don't know, lettuce that we put on both sides. Um, the analogy kind of falls apart after the bread and the, and the mustard, but you get what I mean, right? You want one color in the center, and then same colors radiating outwards, okay? And if we draw our line, if the orange is our line, we've got vertical symmetry, right? Because we've got all the same colors coming out. This one, we actually also have horizontal symmetry because they're the same colors top to bottom. Um, so what you'll do is you'll pick up your strips of paper, just one right after the other, and make a nice stack with all similar colors together. Now, if you've managed to find a stapler, which I hope that you have, because this is much easier with a stapler, you'll go ahead and staple right in the center of your stack. So you've got a little bit here, a little bit here, staple right in the middle. And then if you're using glue, go ahead and glue everything so that it sticks together like right in the center and double stick tape the same. If you're using glue, maybe do this part first, go off, do the name activity, come back to this when it's like good and set and dry. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice both vertical and horizontal symmetry. And we're gonna make like really cool butterflies or flowers or more bugs. We're like in a really symmetrical bug mood today. So you've got your staple in there. You're gonna manipulate your paper um, to create new shapes. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to all of the pieces that are that color. So whatever I do to the pink piece, I do to all four pink strips that are coming off. Whatever I do to one purple piece, I do to all of the purple pieces that come off. Now, there's a lot of ways to manipulate paper. Um, you can fold it like a fan, so it goes You can curl it up, so it's like a curly Q bug thing. You can fold it at 90 degree angles and make like a weird snake. Um, you can even, if you have scissors, uh, use it to cut, so you make like a fringe up top. You can fold it in like uh, half and then cut half triangles to make diamonds in the center or you can change the outside of your strip of paper. So you'll go through and on each of the four quadrants, you'll do the exact same thing to each color. And what you end up with is a butterfly bug weirdo flower that looks like this. So all of my pinks I curled, all of my purples I bent, all of my blues I fanned, and all of my greens I turned into fringe. And then your color in the center, your orange, that's just your like dividing line. It's nice to have like a, here's where the symmetry happens on both sides. And if you want, if you have a hole punch, um, you can punch a hole in that one. Or if you don't, you can take your scissors and do that thing that we talked about where you fold it over a little bit and then cut out a little notch. So now you've got a hole in your orange one and you can put a piece of string and hang it like a mobium. And you've got like a cool butterfly bug symmetrical sun catcher. Now this guy is symmetrical vertically, right? Because this is the same as this. It's also symmetrical horizontally because if we put our line here, the top looks the same as the bottom. So here is your all the way symmetrical paper sculpture creation. Okay, guys, that is the end of Art Lab today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back next week. I hope you've had a good time. Enjoy your projects.